In today's discussion, we shall learn how to sort items. Sorting is the process of rearranging a given set of items according to a given criterion. As we saw in our previous discussion, sorting has several advantages. It can allow us to do binary search on an array which is much faster than brute force search. It can also speed up other operations as we saw in the practice problems. In fact, an entire sub-area of machine learning called ranking is closely related to sorting and has several applications such as internet search, recommendation systems and others. For example, when you type in a query on an internet search engine like Google or Bing, what you get is actually a sorted list of web pages in decreasing order of relevance to the query that you asked. We will start our discussion with two simple but not so fast sorting algorithms, the first one being selection sort. Selection sort is a fairly simple algorithm which uses a lot of the concepts we have learned in our previous discussion such as active ranges and invariants. Selection sort maintains an active range which is initially the entire array. Note that the active region is always on the right hand side of the array. It also maintains two invariants. First, it ensures that elements outside of the active region are always sorted in increasing order. And second, it ensures that no element in the non-active region is ever larger than any element inside the active region. Selection sort keeps shrinking the active region by selecting the smallest element in the active region and bringing it to the leftmost position of the active region. This act of selecting the smallest element in the active region is perhaps how this algorithm got its name. Let's take an example to understand this algorithm better. Here, we have an array that is not sorted. We wish to use selection sort to turn it into a sorted array. Initially, the entire array is the active region. As we step through this algorithm, it would be nice if you could keep verifying if the promises of the invariants always hold or not. Anyway, let's start executing the algorithm. We select the smallest element in the active range, it happens to be 1 in this case, and bring it to the leftmost position of the active range using a swap. After this, we shrink the active range since the smallest element in the array is already at its correct location. We again find the smallest element in this new active range, it is element 3, but we need not move it since it is already in the leftmost position of the active range. Thus, all we need to do is shrink the active range further. The smallest element in the active range is now the element 4, which we bring to the leftmost position and shrink the active range even more. Notice how the algorithm ensures that non-active elements are always sorted in increasing order and they are no bigger than any element in the active range, as promised in the invariants. As we can see, repeating these for a few more steps will completely sort the array. Here we see pseudo code for the selection sort algorithm. Convert it into proper C code and try to use recursion to implement this algorithm instead of using a for loop. Let us now analyze the asymptotic time complexity of the selection sort algorithm. Recall that this will give us an idea of how much time the algorithm will take to sort a given array irrespective of the actual machine on which the algorithm is being executed. Let Tn be the time taken by selection sort to sort an array with n elements. Let m of n be the time required to find the smallest element in a set of n elements. It is easy to see that due to the steps taken by the selection sort algorithm, t of n is less than equal to m of n plus c plus t of n minus 1, where m of n is the time taken to find the smallest element in the active range, c is the time taken to perform the necessary swaps, and t of n minus 1 is the time taken to process the remaining active range. It's easy to see that finding the smallest element in a set of n elements takes no more than d times n time, where d is some constant depending on the exact implementation of our find min algorithm. Solve this recurrence relation using the big O notation to argue that the time complexity of selection sort is order n square. A very nice property of the selection sort algorithm is that it is what we call an 
in place sorting algorithm what this means that selection sort can take an unsorted array of n elements and sort it without allocating too much additional memory say order n memory this is opposed to some other sorting algorithms which we shall see later which first create an empty array of n elements before creating the sorted array those algorithms would not be considered in place algorithms but selection sort is an in place algorithm let us now look at another sorting algorithm called insertion sort just like selection sort insertion sort also maintains an active range that is always on the right hand side of the array however the invariants here are a bit different insertion sort only ensures that the non active portion of the array is always sorted however it does not ensure that non active elements would always be smaller than the active ones the sorting strategy adopted by insertion sort takes the leftmost element of the active region and inserts it into its correct position within the non active range thereby ensuring that the non active region always remains sorted as promised in the invariant this insertion operation is perhaps how the sorting algorithm got its name insertion sort is somewhat like selection sort in that in both algorithms the first k elements of the array are sorted after k iterations of the algorithm however where a selection sort spends time searching for the smallest element of the active region insertion sort saves that time and instead searches for the correct position of the leftmost active element within the sorted non active region as before let's take the same example to see how insertion sort works keep track of how insertion sort maintains the promises made in the invariant initially the active range is the entire array and the non active portion is empty this means inserting the leftmost element of the active range into this empty non active region is trivial the leftmost element of the active region is now 3 so we now need to insert 3 into the non active region since the non active region is just the single element 6 we needs to go before 6 for the non active region to remain sorted once we do this we can shrink the active region now 5 becomes the leftmost element of the active region inserting it into the non active region would mean putting it between 3 and 6 so that the non active region remains sorted after doing this we can shrink the active region once more the new leftmost element is 9 but it is already larger than all the non active elements so inserting it doesn't require any work so we can just go ahead and shrink the active region further notice how the non active region always remains sorted as promised by the invariant as we can see repeating this for a few more steps will completely sort the array here we see pseudo code for the insertion sort algorithm convert it into proper c code and find out the time complexity of this algorithm is it the same as that of selection sort in today's discussion we looked at two sorting algorithms selection sort and insertion sort both are pretty simple algorithms but they are actually quite slow with time complexity of order of n square in the next discussion we will study sorting algorithms that are much faster and offer time complexity of just order n log n till then stay safe and do join us next time